and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The final of Euro 2020 is set, with England taking on Italy at Wembley this weekend. On the balance of play throughout the tournament, these have probably been two of the best sides around, so it promises to be an enticing final. But what tactics could Gareth Southgate and Roberto Mancini potentially use in the final, and what will each have to watch out for? In this video, we take a look. And in the lead up to the final, if you want to keep up with the breaking news and all the build up to the final, you can check out our video sponsor, the One Football app, which now has a dedicated news section just for the Euros, and you can download it for free through the link in the description below. And on match day, they will be giving you the latest stats, formations, and match updates from the final, and so much more. Now, how might each side line up? Italy have pretty consistently throughout the tournament played a 4-3-3 that looks like this and are likely to stick to this. Spinazzola will miss out due to injury, so Emerson will likely come in at left back. There is a slight question mark of whether it will be Chiesa or Berardi on the right wing, but in all likelihood it will be Chiesa. England have switched it up a bit more, using a back three against Germany to match up against their opposition's back three. An Italy shape on the pitch is often a back three, so there is an off chance that England could look to use that shape. But, in all probability, they will stick to a 4-2-3-1 that looks like this, as it's brought them so much success. Now what could Italy do in possession, and how could England look to counter this? For most of this tournament, England have impressed particularly high, so Italy may be able to play out relatively easily. But if England do press high from goal kicks, Italy will split their centre-backs to create a back three, so that if England press with the front three, Emerson and Di Lorenzo could be the easy outlets. But in open play, throughout the tournament, we have seen Italy play essentially with a back three, as Di Lorenzo drops in as the right centre-back, whilst Emerson in this case would push higher up on the left. And although on paper, it would be easy for England to press the Italy midfield with Phillips and Rice on Verratti and Barella and Mount on Jorginho, in reality, Verratti and Jorginho form a double pivot, whilst Barella pushes higher up into the right half space. So, to initiate a high press, Phillips would have to be much higher, in addition, Insigne will often push into the left half space so that Italy is essentially attacking with the front five. So if England's front three are drawn onto the Italy back three and the pivots are well covered, the wide men become the easy outlets for Italy. And down the left, Italy will particularly miss Spinazzola in these situations. When receiving the ball in these scenarios, Spinazzola was very much front foot and when confronted, will be happy to take on his man down the outside, looking to get into crossing situations to find Immobile. But as a right-footed left-back, he is also less predictable and can come infield with the ball to attack the box and either look to have a shot or release a man who is better positioned. Emerson on the other hand is more one-dimensional and is likely to just look to attack the byline, making Italy's attack more predictable. In addition, Spinazzolo was willing to consistently rotate positions with Insigne on the inside, as again, being naturally right-footed, he was happy to be in these positions, which would give Italy more attacking flexibility. But with Emerson, we will likely see less of this, making them more static. A problem England faced against Denmark's front five was that when they did go wide, if the England fullback came across to cover high up, the centre backs would now be forced to shift across, leaving a potential 2 vs 1 on the far side. But through the centre, Italy will still be a threat, with the mobile being quite physical and able to occupy the centre backs. So if England hold this pressing shape, if the fullbacks are wider, Using the dual tens in Barella and Insigne would be a major threat, as we have seen the centre-backs being willing to attempt risky, line-breaking passes. If these two are able to receive, they can look to play in either the full-back or the centre-forward, or even drive higher up the pitch to have the shot. England could potentially change their shape and have Phillips be the second pivot, although of course now Mount will be 2 versus 1 down higher up. And this is a situation where Italy would thrive, as they love having Jorginho and Verratti dictating play from deep, as they can pick out game-breaking passes or quickly find the likes of Chiesa wide early on for the 1 vs 1. We have seen England adapt their defensive shape in ways that could suit them in this game. At times, Sterling has been tucked in off the left when defending, so he and Mount could cover the pivots, allowing Rice and Phillips to cover the tens in deeper regions. Of course, this would leave Di Lorenzo in space, but his role is usually much less offensive, so England may be happy with this. And once Di Lorenzo gets on the ball, England could then shift across to cover him. 
Alternatively, Kane could drop deeper when defending, with the wingers in advance of him, so that Kane could help cover the pivot and then Italy would be filtered to one side or the other. But still, if Southgate is highly concerned about the potential 5 vs 4 disadvantage when defending, we may see him shift to a back 5. What could England do in possession though? We have seen Italy look to press higher up with a man-to-man -man press in midfield and Insigne coming in off the left-hand side. And of course, this would leave Walker potentially free, but we have seen Italy adapt with the fullback pressing high up and the rest of the backline shifting to a back three effortlessly to cover the space. This could still be risky however, especially as Sterling and likely Saka would have the pace to potentially get away from their 1 vs 1 markers. In open play, England will be quite flexible. If Insigne is high up looking to create a 2 vs 2 against the centre backs, England can easily shift to a 3 to give a man much more space deep, either by having Rice drop in from midfield or by having Walker operate as a right centre back. And again, the Italian midfield on paper will be set up for a man-to-man -man press, which is something they looked to do initially against Spain. But Spain also exposed an obvious weakness of Italy's when they used Olmo as a false 9, as usually Chiellini and Bonucci, who are both physical defenders, like to be in close contact with their man. But by using a false 9, this is taken away from them, and Kane can drop in to create a 4 vs 3, and can receive the ball and look to begin the next phase of play. And where Spain's wingers remained wide with the four backs deep, Shaw in particular will be pushing high up down the left, and this will allow Sterling to move infield so that England could potentially have a 5 vs 3. But Spain couldn't fully exploit the overload, as when Bonucci or Chiellini looked to drop deep to cover the forward, no one attacked the space, but this is something that Saka and Sterling in particular would excel at as they looked to make runs from deep. One way Italy could look to counter this is by not having their midfielders Verratti and Barella in particular press at all, instead sitting deep, ready to cover the dropping cane. And this is because whilst this would give Rice and Phillips space deeper, unlike for example Jorginho and Verratti, these two are less likely to use the time to pick out intricate passes higher up the pitch as they have struggled with progression throughout the tournament. Lastly, England could look to exploit Insigne's higher positioning when defending, by first looking to overload the left hand side to draw Italy across before switching it out to Saka or Walker on the far side. But of course, these are just a few of the potential ways this match could go, but I'd love if you commented down below what you anticipate, and more importantly, let me know how you think the final will end, and where the trophy will end up. And if you want even more content, whilst helping to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash simple. You'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as access to the upcoming FMS video podcast. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.